the Catholic Church really is pagan. I, I mean, I hate to say it, but it's pagan. Once you see Panchamama, once you see this Our Lady of the Amazon nonsense, it's just paganism. You know, and they get so much into, well, let's talk to this saint and that saint, this dead saint and that. I mean, it's just when the saints technically, I know they're not dead, right? But they get so much into it that it becomes, it, it, it become it, it, be, it begins to take priority over Christ. You see, it, it, it begins to take priority over Christ. For example, there's a very... Um, let me give you an example here. Hold on. Saint Montefiore. Um, let me read to you guys this quote here. This is very revealing as to what I mean. Saint Louis de Montfort stated that the Virgin Mary is greater than Christ. And this guy is considered a saint in the church and he is quoted all the time. He's not like one of those, because there's many saints in the Catholic church, but he's not like one of those saints that got sainted uh, hundreds of years ago and then forgotten about. They bring him up all the time. All the time. Check this out. This is crazy. So this is from the book that he wrote, um, St. Louis de Montfort, on dedication to the Virgin Mary. The name of the book, I think, is called True Devotion to Mary. And this is what it says here. Let me just get, make sure my volume is good. Okay. It says here, and as much as grace perfects nature, the glory perfects grace. It is certain that our Lord is still in heaven as much the Son of Mary as he was on earth, and that consequently he has preserved the most perfect obedience and submission of all children towards the best of all mothers. But we must take great pains not to conceive of this dependence as any abasement or imperfection in Jesus Christ. For Mary is infinitely below her son, who is God, and so this, this is the pre-qualification, and therefore she does not command him as a mother here below would command her child, who is below her. Mary, being altogether transformed into God by grace, and by the glory which transforms all the saints into him, asks nothing, wishes nothing, does nothing which is contrary to the eternal and immutable will of God, when we read then in the writings of Saints Bernard, Bernadine, Bonaventure, and others that in heaven and on earth everything, even to God himself, is subject to the Blessed Virgin, they mean to say that the authority which God has been well pleased to give her is so great that it seems as if she has the same power as God and that her prayers and petitions are so powerful with God that they always pass for commandments with his majesty who never resists the prayer of his dear mother because she is always humble and, con and conformed to his will so in a way he is saying that mary is greater than christ he's saying all everything on earth everything on heaven is subject to the virgin mary it's too much this is too much it's Ma marianity yeah it's just way too much that in heaven and on earth everything even to God himself, is subject to the Blessed Virgin. But there are churches of Mother of God. Absolutely. Dedication to the Mother of God. But I think there's a limit to this stuff, right? <sighs> yeah, in Bosnia, they have this thing called Maidjagori. And, and, and there are people who go there and they, they have visions of the Virgin Mary. And they... Uh, I knew this woman, okay? She was so dated. Uh, she was so dedicated to my Jigori, and she was just so adamant about it. So adamant about my Jigori this and my Jigori that. And she was saying that she went to my Jigori and she saw people being possessed by demons and then exorcised. And I'm just like, why would you be possessed by demons? If you're a Catholic and you're going to Maijigori, which is supposed to be of God, right? If it's really of God and your dedication to this stuff is really of God, then why would you be possessed by demons, right? People who are children of God are not going to be possessed by demons. But these people were being possessed by demons. And another thing, this is what I don't like about this kind of writing. All right, let's go back to the Montefiore quote. So I don't like about this kind of writing. So he says here, okay, uh, 
She's below God. That's it. Why do we have to sit? Like, why do we have to keep going from there? That's it. She's below God. Boom. Done. But no, they have to add this ambiguity. Well, it seems like everything is subject to her. It seems like she has the same power of God. Why do we have to confuse people? Why, why is that so important to put in there? It seems as if she has the same power as God. That is insane. Like, if I said, you know, I think... You know, I think Putin is below God, but it seems like he has the same power as God. People be like, wait, what are you talking about? That would be weird, right? So the same logic applies to this. I think that Mary has the same power as God. What? That's Well, it seems as if she has the same. Why do you have to say that? What's the point? Why can't you just say Mary is below God? Mary is below Christ. Done. No, we have to add all this other other stuff, right? We got to add all this other stuff to it. And this is from a saint. This is from uh, Louis de Montfort, one of the greatest saints in in uh, in the Catholic Church. I think what's happening is that you want to go into schism, but do you know that corrupt men in the church is not a justification to do so? <sighs> is not a justification to do so. So now you're looking for theological reasons to split. Fanatics who say her medical things about Medjugorje or place Mary above Christ, Christ have no part of the church is not a justification to do so. Now you're looking for theological reasons to split. All right, I really hit a hornet's nest with this one. I think Mary is the greatest woman who ever lived, but she's not greater than Christ. I mean, it's just that simple. It really is that simple. To the naked eye, it seems that the earth is flat. I, oh, Lord God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Um, <laughs> I haven't even had a beer yet, and I already feel drunk. This is how religious infighting starts, saying stuff like this that cause confusion. It's just confusion. It's like saying homosexuality is a sin, but it seems like it's not a sin. What? Is it a sin? Is it not a sin? Don't do this seeming crap, right? You know, all this stuff, it seems that way. You know, all that is just seeds of confusion. All this is just seeds of confusion. And I think... Oh, somebody just brought up Poland. For example, Mary is accepted from centuries as a queen. So in Poland, I'm glad you brought up Poland because you just reminded me of something here. We're going to have a fun live stream. Uh, I said we're going to have some fun. In Poland, they have like a dozen or maybe even more than that. They got a whole bunch of places where supposedly apparitions of the Virgin Mary manifested. They say the Virgin Mary appeared here, etc., etc. And it is like some kind of a cult, right? Where they build the church and dedication. Like somebody claimed to have seen the Virgin Mary. And, oh man, some Polish guy told me all about this. There was a Polish guy I was talking to. He was telling me all about this stuff. Like somebody will claim they saw the Virgin Mary on the, on the side of the road here as they were buying some pierogi. And people believe this person. And then they build... A church there. They're like, here's a church in dedication to this one place where somebody claimed to have seen the Virgin Mary. So here is a Marian apparition, which supposedly happened in Poland, of all places. And it says here, 76 years since the first apparition in Warsaw's Sierkerki. It has been 76 years since the day when the Mother of God appeared for the first time on a cherry tree in Sierkerki, to a 12-year-old named Vladija Franjic. I'm not sure if this is a guy's name or a what. Sometimes I see Slavic names and I'm like, what? I, I, like, I've seen Russians named Ilya. I'm like, that's a woman's name, right? No, it's a guy's name. Vladija Franjic. Okay, what has changed in Skierki since then? Uh, there is the, the magnificent sanctuary of Our Lady, teacher of youth, etc., etc. Uh, it says here, on May 3rd, on the Feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Queen of Poland, indulgence ceremonies are held there, numerous pilgrims, etc., etc. Uh, so the Auxiliary Bishop of Warsaw, Bishop Piotr Jareski, etc., etc. 
So this is so night. So October thirteenth, nineteen forty-three, Our Lady said, "Dear little children, follow me and my son, and will, and I will cover you with my mantle, and nothing bad will happen to you." Especially now, it is necessary to spread the cult of the Mother of God and Jesus from Warsaw's Sierkerki when children are at risk of methodical demoralization at school. This is uh, this is the person's opinion. So, 1943, this person got a vision, and if you look at these Marian apparitions in Poland, right, they happened like in 1940 something, and they warn about communism. See, and this is the thing that 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 makes me suspicious of all this. So let me give you guys another example. Is this Marian apparition happens in the 1940s when Polish people were being butchered like chickens by the Ukrainians. And Mary doesn't tell them anything about Ukrainian nationalism. Mary has nothing better to tell them except for uh, something about communism. That's all Mary has to warn them about. Communism, communism, communism. But Mary doesn't tell them anything about Nazism. Mary doesn't tell them anything about Ukrainian uh, nationalism. Mary doesn't say anything about about any of the things that really were butchering the Polish people. I mean, more Polish people were killed by the Nazis than they were by the Soviet Union. Not saying the Soviet Union was good, but you would think that if Mary's going to be warning the Polish people about something, she would have at least said something about Nazism. But everything is about communism. 